Hello, and I think we've, we're live once again on a beautiful Tuesday evening. Uh, welcome to the stream if anyone's watching this already. I don't assume there are, but for the people in the future, welcome. Today we're going to be doing some more Golang. Uh, we're going to be <laughs> continue to write continue to write our CMS application uh, with Golang uh, on the back end, HTMX to help uh, in the front end. And now we're going to be introducing uh, some more database integrations uh, and migrations uh, with Goose. So yeah, welcome. Let me just make sure that I can hear myself in the first place and you guys can also hear myself on the stream by doing my initial audio checks here, pausing the music. It's already, I don't assume there are, but for the people in the future. So yeah, welcome. Let me just make sure that I can hear myself in the first place and you guys can also hear myself on the stream by doing my initial audio checks here, pausing the music. Okay, I mean, it seems okay, it seems okay. So uh, music's a little bit quiet, but we're gonna be going with that anyway. Uh, so for anyone wondering, uh, where all this code that I'm actually uh, developing is. Uh, you can actually find it on GitHub. I added a new project, a new repository to my account called uh, Urchin. Urchin is is the uh, the repository that's gonna be holding all of this, this code that we're creating on these streams, this Golang streams. And you can see I've added some nice descriptions here, uh, but we still have a lot to do. Um, so yeah, let's let's begin the stream, I guess. Uh, let me just make sure I fix the chat here so I can actually see who's talking to me. And there we go, it's, now we're ready. Uh, so let me actually open the project on my WSL here. I don't actually know how many viewers there are on the stream because I my stream deck isn't working. So development. I don't know what it is about Golang, but I seem to be very excited uh, to kind of write this at the end of the day. Uh, you know, after I've done my work, after I've, I've maintained some of the, the stuff that I usually maintain during uh, the day as well, C++ and stuff, I'm just very excited to write Go. I think it's a very friendly <laughs> language for beginners and I am not a Go developer, so I'm definitely a beginner in the language, uh, but I still find my way around it. So it's not too bad. Uh, cool. So uh, first things first, uh, since the last stream, I actually split this code into um, a few more manage, manage mm, <laughs> a few more um, easy to manage modules. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, so you can see here that not all the codes, not all of the code is in like one single file called main.go. And we've got a first person on the stream. Hello, Peter. How is it going, dude? I hope you're doing fine, man. Um, so how you been, man? Did you have a good weekend? Uh, not actually spoken to you since since last week, right? I think it was. Yeah, that was last stream. Also, make sure you watch my latest video, dude, and click like. <laughs> I would appreciate that so much. Uh, it's very fun to watch anyway. Uh, so yeah, let's begin with the... Um, application itself. So the application uh, itself, uh, so in other words, all the logic for adding handlers to endpoints. Uh, so things like uh, serving the, uh, the index page and serving the contact page or this contact templates uh, is all done inside the app module here. And the actual entry point to this module is the run function. So uh, as you can probably guess, um, my, my main sort of um, executable it's going to be calling this application run here and this is just going to add all of the endpoint handlers as you can as you can tell here and it's basically the same code as, as what we had before nothing really changed i just moved things around right and it also declares the app settings structure inside that module uh, and this is where i'm actually going to add certain files related to uh, particular pages that we're going to be serving so for example the contact form uh, has, has its own contact.go file here uh, which is where i say i, I create my function where i de declare my function that is kind of serving the contact handler and as you can probably guess i'm going to kind of do the same with perhaps the uh, the posts page or or whatnot uh, so it's all going to go inside the app Peter, I'm doing super fine, sir, and have weekend. Nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you again, man. Hope you're you're having you know a good time studying <laughs> still, uh, and I hope that you're doing well. Um, when when did you actually finish um, your university, Peter? I think I never asked you that. It should be soon, right? 
Are you like in a in your last year or something? Uh, right. So moving on from the app, doo -doo 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 -doo, we also have the database. The database is obviously where all the database related code is going at the moment. So you can see that I define the database struct here. I don't quite like the way this is defined yet because it does. Uh, this structure doesn't actually allow me to uh, mimic the database. Excuse me. I need to uh, drink some water. Yeah, so this structure doesn't actually let me uh, mimic the database or uh, mock it out. So I need to figure out how to do that in Golang because I'm going to be adding some tests to this library pretty soon. In fact, I should have already added some tests. But yeah, uh, anyway, this is where the, the database structure is defined. And we kind of pass this around uh, between the application to get stuff from the database, right? Uh, we also have a few functions, well, just one function at the moment, one uh, function defined for that database structure, uh, which is get posts. It, it simply returns the post from the database. Nothing interesting there. And then we also have a factory function called make SQL connection, uh, which given the, the user password address and port, it just returns you the uh, equivalent database connection. Okay. Uh, this is all at the moment being done on localhost, but uh, potentially you could um, put this app up online at, uh, and just have a connection to a, a database that's, you know, elsewhere, I guess. It doesn't have to be in your local, in your local host. Uh, yeah, so this is the database and then we have migrations, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, but following from that, we have the static directory. We already had that is where all the static files are going to be served from. And we have templates here as well with contact and index subdirectories. Back to the Golang project, Griffin. Yeah, indeed, yeah. Dude, I'm really enjoying uh, writing Golang. Uh, I don't know what it is. I was just saying at the beginning of the stream. Uh, where I'm really looking forward to writing some Golang at the end of the day. No idea why. <laughs> it's uh, I guess it's easy and it's kind of like, you know, similar to, to something like Python, but it also has a lot of like safety mechanisms and type safety. So it's it's good. I like it. I like the type of language. Yeah, make SQL connection factory function. And then we've got templates with all the HTML template files. So that, that's currently the structure. And for you guys that own the stream, uh, Griffin and Peter, I did upload this to a GitHub repository here, in case you guys want to look at the code. Um, I changed things around a little bit, but I've decided that the main um, the main purpose of this project is to be a headless CMS. So we're obviously we're nowhere near that yet. So we barely can we can barely save server uh, posts from a database. But um, the idea is to do things like you know you, you can you can headlessly add uh, posts, pages, uh, you can switch a template and, and etc. Uh, all through this through this app, and I'm gonna try and do it in 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 in, in, a, in a most sort of like minimal way as possible. So, yeah. Uh, but today we're gonna be actually doing some database stuff, right? So currently, I'm not sure um, if I actually went over this on the last streams too much, but uh, we do have a, a database integration, as you guys probably know, um, and we have a table for posts. There. So let me just log in and show it to you guys what it kind of looks like at the moment. Uh, so user root is password is root as well. What is what is the issue here? Wait, my SQL. Oh yeah, my SQL. There you go. So right. Um, table is called yeah. So if we just describe it, can we just describe? Or show, the show a thing. Yeah, so we've only got like this this kind of um, very simple table to hold the posts, and the posts have a, an idea, content, and title. Uh, but then, like, it occurred to me after the last stream that like, what happens if I want to modify this? What happens if I want to then come here and maybe I want to copy WordPress and WordPress has, you know, a lot more things to the post as you can probably guess. Uh, but um, as an example, I could add an excerpt column here uh, in, in, in the state that it was uh, before this stream. Uh, I would have to change the schema manually and I'll have to like create a dump of the schema and um, kind of, kind of um, 
distribute that with my source code, which isn't ideal. It's very difficult to kind of track uh, the versioning of, of your um, database. Uh, so the solution to that is actually to use migrations, uh, which I'm guessing you guys that actually do web development, uh, <laughs> unlike me, uh, you kind of know what that is. So it's kind of a way to like slowly build up the database or revert back changes uh, with up and down uh, commands. So uh, one of the libraries in Golang that actually does this kind of stuff is called Goose. Uh, and it essentially just writes a collection of versioned um, like diffs for your database that you can apply. So uh, I, I've actually done some of this myself here. So if I just open in Visual Studio Code, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, so say like for the sake of argument, we didn't actually have a database, right? So if we did a, uh, if we went in, into the, uh, the database itself, I think it's called ghosting mess at the moment. And I just drop the table, drop table, um, ooh, drop table posts, right? Say we didn't have that. So the app doesn't work anymore, of course. But uh, with my migration files here that I've added, in fact, you can see the first one is this one here. So add sample posts. I can do one change at a time uh, in a forward and backwards way. So for example, this very first change that I could apply to a database to end up with, with the state of a database that I want is to add a, a, sorry, a post table, right? So post table is the very first thing that I need in my in my database for this application to run. And uh, with Goose, you can create this this uh, SQL file that has a Goose up command. So this the Goose up version is basically the the um, the command you want to apply uh, the changes. Uh, you want to apply to your database to have the changes that you want for this version here. And the down command is the one that reverts that so you can go back in time, okay? So this is kind of what it looks like. So in my up command, as you can probably guess, I create a table with integer, a content title. Uh, and then if I wanted to revert that, for some reason, if I wanted to go back uh, before this version, I, I would I'd have to drop the table. That's like the reverse of it. And I also added a new one here, which adds a... a um, an example post for my website. So it shows up on the front page and you can see here that once it adds the post, I can then add a sample, po I can add a sample post and that sample post is just an insert into a uh, command here that adds some markdown to my posts um, table here, right? And of course, the reverse of that is to drop the newly added post. In other words, drop the last added uh, post here, which, you know, can be done with this command here. So this is what Goose does. Goose will kind of select either the up or down command depending on which version you want to go to and you will apply them in sequence right so you end up with the correct um, version correct state of your database right uh, and it's actually very easy to use uh, let me see if i can add a new one here so for example say that we wanted to we have the, the post table, right say we wanted to add an excerpt here so for example we wanted to add like an excerpt text here, which is what shows up on the main page, right? And then you can see like the text and the excerpt text, and then there'll be a read more link. Uh, if we wanted to do that, uh, we would have to add a new um, migration file here. And if I'm not mistaken with Goose, let's see if we can get that working now. Uh, first of all, you can install Goose by doing a, a, a go install Goose here. It's all on the uh, repository. I'm going to let you guys Google that if you're interested. Uh, but also um, with Goose, what we can do is we can do a Goose, I think it's create, I believe, and then the name of the uh, the migration file that you want. So let's try uh, add excerpt, add post excerpt, right? And then we want to do an SQL file. We got to we got to put in whether you want an SQL file or a Golang file uh, so you can run Goose as, as a library. We're doing it as an SQL file here. Um, and then you can see that it adds that uh, file, the new file here, uh, which is the post excerpt. And it also versions that with the date of, of the creation. So we've got a message from Griffin. Would there be a way to return post ID so you can delete post ID? Uh, that's the, exactly what I Googled yesterday, you know, uh, Griffin. I was I was wondering like, what's the inverse of a insert statement? Cause like, I'll need to know the ID. Um, 
there is there is a way to find out uh, the latest added ID. I think it's oh my god, let me let me Google it now. Insert return ID. It's doo -doo -doo -doo, this one here, scope identity. This function in, in SQL uh, apparently returns the the last added ID, uh, which you know is a way of doing it because IDs are generally auto increment integers, right? So you you know it starts with zero and then goes up to one and so on and so forth. So the last added ID is always going to be you know the one you want. Uh, in my way, uh, and, and the way I did here. As you can probably guess, I simply just get the last added post in a different way, which is I ordered it by the ID, so I get the, <laughs> the biggest one and limit it by one, so it only gets one ID. And I delete that. Simple, simple as that. Yeah, just had concern when using latest if many things are added. Um, just had a concern when using latest if many things are added. Yeah, but then... Um, the migrations will be applied sequentially, like so. If if you wanted to revert to a, a another version, it would also revert all of the uh, migrations that were added after that. If it makes sense, so it will uh, do a, a goose down on all of the stuff uh, from top to bottom. If it makes sense, so you always end up uh, removing the the correct uh, posts anyway. So you, you won't have that issue. I I, I understand. This is actually a much better approach than. Um, like distributing the, the database schema. I do remember my, my blogging days back in the day when I was a lot younger than I am now. And I would like copy and paste like Joomla and WordPress, um, like SQL schemas to like different servers when I was migrating my website. And always, always something would like go wrong. And with this way, at least you, you kind of apply things sequentially and you know that your, your database is going to be built from like bottom up, if it makes sense to so, like you have less less issues here and it's easier to version as well <laughs> uh, but anyway so you can redistribute these files here the, the migrations files with your database oh sorry with your repository hello antonio hello welcome bem-vindo uh, we were just talking about migrations, dude. I'm not going to explain it again, but if you're interested, you can go back a little bit in time and then you come back to live. Uh, but basically, we're, we're just integrating Goose to this um, CMS so we can build up our database. Uh, yeah, so let's actually do one that will add the... Uh, the... Um, the excerpt column to our, our database, right? So just to remind... So just to recap, I created a Goose... Uh, SQL migration file and now we're gonna just obviously Google it because I can't remember how to do it. We're gonna Google how to add a column in SQL. We have to alter the table, I know that boy. Yeah, alter table add column. Okay, cool. So instead of this sample command here, we're gonna do an alter table posts add column. Uh, right, so how what is the example? I need to type as well, right? So add column, auto table, add column date. Okay, cool. Add column. Why is column not highlighting here? Interesting. Add column, bar date. Okay, anyway. So add column, excerpt. Uh, and it's going to be a text, not null, right? Uh, but because it's not null, and we previously al already had rows in there, with, uh, with, which we'll end up with a, a null column, I guess we also have to add here the, um, um, the, the default excerpt for the previous post, right? Uh, so yeah, we can kind of update, I guess, the, the rows here, right, that we want. So let's do that. Let me just make sure that this is correct. Is, is that how you expel excerpt? Jesus, excerpt. Yeah, there you go. Uh, no, excerpt. A short ex yeah, that's good. Uh, so this is like the introduction text for, for those who don't know this word. <laughs> uh, right, so now we need to modify. So add value to all rows in new column. SQL, that's kind of what we want. I wonder if there's a way to do it on, with in the same command. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, 
So table column that is currently no. Insert into table, table columns values that okay. They're looking for update, not insert. So we need to update my table, set table column to test. Update will change. Okay, so does this set all of the uh the values for all of the rows? I guess we're gonna find out, right? Ah, okay, where table column is equals no. Okay, cool. So now we're gonna um update and then posts. Do we not need the table here? No. We're gonna set excerpt uh, equals um where's the lower aims to generate a simple text generator. Okay. There you go. So let's add, like, I don't know, up to here, maybe. Uh, so that will be our migration. And of course, as I explained, like, you need an up migration and a down migration here. So uh, in this case, we need to alter table posts, I think, remove. Yeah, column, excerpt. Is that how I remove a column? Let me just make sure again. <laughs> I like the gold mascot wearing a goose suit. <laughs> yeah, I do like that too. This one here, right? Yeah, it's it's amazing. This is actually a very good idea. Whoever did this, so I'm gonna start their repository just because of this. So yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so remove column in SQL. Oh, drop column from the looks of it. Also, the table drop column. Okay. Wrong verb. Yeah, I do apologize, guys. I, I do not do SQL on a daily basis. And last time I've done it, it's probably like maybe a year and a half ago <laughs> when I was still at Microsoft. So. Uh, but yeah, uh, so now in essence, we should be able to do a goose, a, a, a goose um, apply here, which will apply each of these um, migrations in order, right? So it's going to apply the posts one first because it comes before anyone, any, any other migration. Uh, and then it's going to apply the sample post here. So it's going to insert one sample post into my database and then it changes the, uh, the, the table uh, to add a, an excerpt um, a column here. Okay, so let's try that. So if I go into my migrations and I do a goose, is it up? Yeah, there you go. Uh, this is kind of how you use it. I'm not sure if you guys can see it very well. So you, you got to define your goose driver. You got to say that it's a MySQL uh, database and your DB string is a connection string for the database. In my case, it's just root as uh, root and I'm a local host. So I just got to provide the uh, database name and I say goose up. So it's going to um, start from the very beginning and add all of the, uh, the migrations. So something didn't work. So what what happened? Auto table post out of column excerpt. You have an error in your SQL syntax. Check manual. Okay, so there's an error here somewhere, right? What is it? Near update posts. So that is obviously an error that I've introduced somewhere. Yeah, let me know if you guys can spot it because I, I can't at the moment. So update posts set excerpt. Ah, yeah, <laughs> of course. Let's try again. Uh, no, still not. Still not done. Yo, Slim, how's it going, man? Good evening. We're doing some migrations today with Goose. So, right, what is the issue? Does it not say what the issue is? Uh, also say we'll post column excerpt. If you have an error in your SQL syntax, check the manual corresponding Oh yeah, please, please. Oh yes, Lim, I forgot that you're, you're the SQL uh, master here. So this is like a migration file for adding a new column to the table. Um, and I'm trying to add, just add um, a column here called, called excerpt to the posts. And then I want to update the, the, the rows that were already there. I want to set the null, um, 
excerpt column to actually have some some random value in it so it's not empty basically this is what i've done <laughs> is this correct man so i'm gonna i'm gonna just like skip through here so you can see the text as well as far as i know there's nothing that needs to be escaped in the text so far but yeah but maybe let me see if i need to so SQL update all rows. Let's do one SQL at a time. Uh, one migration at a time, you mean? So do this in a separate migration. Coming out line 409. Uh, this is not being, this is not running, dude. This is like, um, this is, Goose is only going to run this this bit here, which is the beginning. I'll come in out line 4, though. Or in fact, is that how you're coming to? Let's see. Let's try that. Table go post doesn't exist. What the fuck? Go see a messed up post. Ah, uh, is it post? Posts, no. That's correct. Also table post. I'll right, call them excerpt. Interesting. Uh, I do wonder. You deleted posts. I did delete post checks. I wanted to show you guys how it kind of works from a an empty database. So I'm just going to check what's on the database for now. One second. Just make sure. Can you SSH and check if table posts exist? Uh, yeah, it shouldn't exist because I deleted it. So. So if I describe posts yeah see it doesn't exist so what goose should do is it should run this um, this command here first which is create a table posts with ID content title and then it's gonna run this one here to insert a very a, an example uh, post into it this was working fine until like today I guess so these two files here are working just fine uh, but this one is a problem so this one is failing somehow uh, so just, yeah, let's see if we can run. Please run error, add post excerpts, fail to run SQL migration, fail to execute. CMS post doesn't exist. Uh, what? What? Wait, wait. If I know about migration script, it doesn't run the same migration again if it's been done already. Ah, okay, cool. So um, so basically, well, it it can't have run these migrations though because I've deleted the, the table. Wait, let. Is there a way to say like run these again? Let's find out. Let's look at the uh, Goose documentation. Yeah, I think Goose probably think it's thinks it's been run already and it doesn't, right? That's that's what you're saying. Because I deleted it manually, so <laughs> let's see the options here. Roll back all migrations. Let's do a reset, right? Let's, let's do a reset and then try it again. Okay, so. Clearly reset doesn't do. Roll back all migrations. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of trying to do though. Ah, uh, so one is down here, so.
<laughs> uh, right. But now, what I was actually trying to do is, if we do a, a goose... Is it up? There you go. So everything has been added successfully. So the the problem was this thing here, obviously, because we commented it out, right? So let's let's separate this into a different um, into a different migration file, and then see if we can figure it out in there. But basically, on the on the SQL, so if we we should now have a table called posts, so we can uh, describe posts here, and you can see that it has the excerpt here, which is not null. So we can also do a select all from um, what's it called? Posts. And we can see uh, that we have that um, example file. Sorry, the example post here. But it doesn't yet have the excerpt. Jesus, what what the hell is this like displaying here? What happened here, MariaDB? But yeah. So in a way, uh, we just got to kind of add the new migration here, right? So let's do that. So Goose. Goose create add post excerpt default values, right? Uh, we do an SQL there. So now we have yet another one, and in this case, we're gonna do an alter oh, update, I guess. Is it an update command? Oh, oh, fuck it, we just had that here. And I need to think about what the, the inverse of this command is, so you can roll back. But for now, we update set. Like, Slim, is this right? If I want to update all the values in all of the rows for a column, is this how you do it? <laughs> I'm confused. I hope it is anyway. So I guess the... the uh, This will be the uh, the reverse of it, right? Setting it to null, like it was before. Uh, let's see if we can do a goose up now. Yeah, okay, so we that worked. So maybe it's just one command at a time, I guess, right? That you can you have to do. Happy now. No, uh, I think I figured it, dude, it's fine. I was just asking if this is the right syntax to add a, like the same value to all the rows, but it seems to be seems to be right. So, uh, so now we essentially with all these migrations, we can build the database from from the bottom up, right? So it's easier to distribute this. Update table name set column one. Cool where condition. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, Lim. Uh, right. So now we have a post excerpt, and let's see what our application looks like at the moment. So yeah, it still looks like this. You can see that the markdown file doesn't get um, doesn't get parsed at all. That's maybe something we can do in the stream as well. Uh, add the markdown parsing to HTML, um, and we've got the, the example post here. But this is the wrong thing. I wanted to actually display here on the home page at least the uh, the post excerpt, right? So let's do that instead of the actual post. And then the actual post we can display uh, we can display it on a um, on a, a unique page for it, right? So let's do that. So, <laughs> Antonio, my brother, yeah. Oh shit, yeah, you guys play fucking Tibia, right? Or something like that. Yeah, so where is that? So uh, in the app, let's create a new file here called post. There go. And this has the handler for the post. I'm just going to copy and paste the context, the, uh, the contact one. Make post handler. Uh, what is the post handler going to actually do? So we don't really need all this email stuff. We don't need the parse form because it's nothing that's been parsed. We don't need that. Uh, we don't need that, that either. This is all the contact form. 
what we do need to get is we need to somehow get the uh, post related to the ID of the page, right? So that's kind of what we're going to do. Uh, so to the ID, also the post uh, with the ID, I guess. And once we have that post content, we we can then serve uh, the templated um, page here. Well, as you can probably guess, we're going to do, be doing some markdown parsing. So we need to mark down to HTML uh, the post content. Uh, let's say that that's the plan for now, right? Uh, first things first, we do not have to add a new uh, template here. Let's call it just in post, I guess. And for now, I'm just going to copy the index one into here. Oh, for God's sake, copy it into here. Uh, what can we do here? All right, so we've got the CSS and the JS needed for HTMX and the client and the simple uh, .css thing. Um, right, we don't want the contact form here. I don't know why that's coming to tell. And yeah, we do want an article. So this is kind of what, what we want, really. <laughs> um, except in this case, we only have one post, right? So we, we really only have like one post that title, one post that content. So we don't need the, the loop there. And Nixon calls it, hey, nice, nice to catch you on the stream. Hey, man. <laughs> Welcome again, dude. Welcome again. We're doing some more Golang today. You guys are going to be like bored of Golang by the end of the week, by the way, because I'm probably going to be streaming a little bit more this week. Like, I'm not sure what it is with me, but like when I get excited about writing a particular piece of software or a language, I just I do it over and over again until I get bored. So and I'll probably get bored very soon. But yeah, <laughs> anyway, uh, everyone just check out the, the GitHub repo if you're interested. It's on the link is on the description somewhere, by the way. So yeah, uh, now the plan is to pass the post title and the content here. So uh, and let's also rename this to post HTML. Um, right. So in here we want the post. We don't we need the post though? We need the content and the title. Right. Um, see, in this function, we do actually need the DB. So we need to pass in the database connection here, which is the database. And as Lim suggested, this is a little bit closer to my SQL, uh, to dependency injection here. It's not quite dependency injection, but we're still passing the dependency down. Um, and with that, we're obviously going to do something like uh, database dot get posts, I guess. In fact, let's create a new function for the database, right? Let's we've got one that adds that gets all the posts. Let's create one that gets one particular post based on an ID, right? So yeah, let's do that. Antonio Junior, Brazil. <laughs> Dude, I love the Brazilian people joining in and figuring out that I'm Brazilian and then they, you know, much love, much love. And we'll say two Antonios, yeah, man. That's a very common name in Brazil. Very, very common name. All right, so this function gets a post from the database uh, with the given ID. And yeah, so let's do a get post. And then inside here, we're going to pass in the post ID, which is going to be an integer. Let's do 64 for now. Uh, we're going to return a single post in this case. I'm just going to replace it slightly. Uh, right, so select title content from posts where ID is equals to I guess we can do it here, right? 
So does this parse... Uh, I mean, I know there's no SQL injection at this stage because I'm the one writing the query and the code, but like, and it's not being passed in from the, the user. But is this going to sanitize things for me? It doesn't say anything about it. Yeah, anyway, so let's add that post ID here. Uh, cool. So now we should be able to do, 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 do a... rows.next, I think it is. We need to call this. Wait, I can't see your SQL because of the chat. Oh shit, sorry dude. Uh, that's interesting. I never had this problem before. Um, tell you what. There you go. This should be better now. <laughs> oh no, still not. <laughs> you can see it now. Hacker man. Yeah, but line 41 looks fine. Cool, cool, cool. I, I, I'm assuming you meant the, the, um, this year, right? So this is the one I mean. Uh, I wasn't sure, Slim, if this will like sanitize it for me because like, you know, ID, whatever comes into here, it's, it's just an integer anyway, but like if I were to put some user generated content here or user uploaded content, uh, is this function going to sanitize it for me? I'm not entirely sure if it was like if it was a string. Yes, okay, cool. Thank you. I thought I'd have to prevent SQL injection everywhere. But anyway, get post, and then we should have uh, just one post here. And then we can do a next, and then we can do a scan here, right? So we can do a um, post or var post. I think it's common on post. Was declared and not used, and then we can do a scan right here. I'm just gonna basically copy and paste things from the other function. So I post tile, and then we're gonna return an error here. So cool. Yeah. So very simple function is just a. Uh, the same thing as the get post, but it just does it for one post based on the ID passed in. Why did I do that? Because I want to now, in my uh, post handler, I want to get the post based on the ID that's coming in. So, and I guess I've got to find out which ID we've been given. So in other words, someone's going to request something like, uh, you know, local host, uh, 8080 or whatever. Uh, dash posts and then dash like the ID here and I want to make sure that I can get the ID pass it to an integer and put it here essentially right uh, so yeah I don't know how to do that in Jin so I guess we're, we're gonna we're about to find out uh, Jin parse uh, URL what's it called variable no it's not a variable a uh, URL Jin extract URL parameters, there you go. So. No, 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 this is not what I want. This is not what I want. What's the gin, uh, Golang gin documentation? Like, do you know what I mean, Slim? Like, I kind of want to just get this ID here. This in Golang, this is called the, you know, you extract the uh, the parameter here from the URL. Hopefully, it's the same error, the same name in engine. So introduction, deployment, examples. Let's see the examples here. So bind URL. Oh, there you go. That's what I wanted. So this dynamic roots. Yeah, that 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 also sounds sounds like it could be it, but it's actually called bind a URL binding, apparently. Uh, so we found it anyway. This is kind of what we want. So we want when adding the roots, we want to kind of query parameters. Cool, yeah, yeah. The query parameters are more like after the uh, the question mark, right? I guess this is like binding parts of the URL, basically. Um, so in the context, what 
should bind your eye person. Ah, this is really interesting. So like, cool, we can have like a marshalling kind of thing in here. So in essence, I can have something like a type post request. Oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, I guess post has a different meaning, right? So <laughs> post uh, bindings, post binding uh, structure. And then we're gonna have the uh, the ID is the only thing that we need really, which is a string, and then it has to have a particular type here. Binding required UID. Um, can this be an integer? In sixty four. Let's try if we can. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, so it has to be an ID with a capital there, of course. Not compatible with reflect by the syntax. Is this valid now? Wait, what? Struct field tag URI binding not compatible. Okay, why is it not though? Ah, yeah. Let's just start. In 64. Roads for 1k subs. Yay! Yeah, Tom, yeah, Tom. That's the plan, dude. I'm not gonna lie, like the amount of like work you have to do just to get 1k on YouTube is fucking, it's ridiculous, man. Some people get lucky and like have a video that just gives them like a million views in, in one video. But it's definitely a lot more hard work than that for me, unfortunately. Uh, okay, Slim, I got your message here. This is what I meant by not seeing your screen. Yeah, the chat's too big, isn't it? Isn't it too big? Maybe maybe I'll, I'll remove the, I'll not remove, but just resize it a little bit and also I didn't realize but the Spotify widgets aren't working I do apologize for that there you go it should be working out <laughs> nice uh, it's exponential for real yeah let's let's hope so let's hope is that a good 10 to the power of exponential graph um, but yeah, so we got that now. Um, we're making a CMS, Tom. Let's tune in for like another t 10 minutes and you see another post handling <laughs> thing in there. It's very basic though. Probably like a, a walk in the park for you, innit? You're used to doing more like complicated things, I guess. Um, what did I want? This, so. via post binding, uh, which is a post binding here. Uh, JS, TS is easy. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing Golang though. I refuse to do JavaScript, <laughs> I'm joking. Go is hard a bit. No, Go is very easy, I would say. Probably easier than JS, to be honest. From the looks of it, it looks easier than JS anyway. Like, it's, it's very similar to, to C. Like a simple syntax and you know, things just like, do what you expect them to do. Okay, so we return a JSON here. We probably want to redo this error in the future. Uh, but now we have post binding the ID and we can pass that in there, uh, right? No, not quite. Right, that's one of the things I can't do. How do we cast strings to strings? Oh, is it the... Yeah, no, I didn't know how to do this, actually. I want to turn a string into an integer. Until you get concurrency, all hell breaks loose. Yeah, until you get concurrency and you have to work with channels and whatnot. I do remember those, so well, I can't wait to get to that. Right, so is strconv or something? Yeah, strconv. Conv. Right, so post ID. strconv. A to I or something, A to I. And then the string itself is post binding. No ID there. Uh, 
I think it gives me an error as well, doesn't it? Does it? Yeah, into an error. So declared and not used. And then if we, if we have an error here, if error is in nil, we kind of, what do we want to do? I'm just going to say this here. I'm going to redo this error in a bit. When something goes wrong, we're going to serve an error page. But for now, we don't have that. And then we can do post ID here. Uh, what do we have? We've got the post and the error. SCR Conv A to I. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. It's easier than TS until you hit cynical dependency issues. <laughs> I've not hit those yet, luckily. Um, to the post ID cannot be used. Can I use post ID as, as an argument to a database? Why not? What does this return? Integer. Right, str conv a to i does string to integer. I want a string to int 64 though. Is it possible? Is it possible? Is there a function to do so? In Golang? All right, I'm gonna be Google it. Int to int 64 Golang. I mean, I don't really care to be honest. Like, this can be an integer because this, I'm not gonna have like a lot of posts anyway, right? So we should we should support like four million posts at least. <laughs> I feel. Let's just put int there. There you go, and that kind of works now. Um, and then we've got the post here declared and not used. Uh, I know that you can defer errors as well. Like currently, I'm just checking if the errors aren't nil, but. There is a pattern where you defer the error checking to later on. So you only have like a single point where you check all the errors and print them and whatever, log them. So you don't have to like do this over and over again in Golang, but I'm a noob still. I'll get there. Oh. Cool. And now we have the, the post. Defer meaning run this function or statement. Yes, yeah, so you can do like, I was reading about this the other day, just out of topic. Uh, so defer error golang. You can do error checking in a single uh, function, kind of everywhere, right? So you can have like a cleanup function that checks the error, like prints the, uh, logs the, the error and so on and so forth. Uh, so instead of running or having to do something like this all the time in many, many places, you can just defer the error checking for later on. So I thought that was a neat pattern and it, it saves a few lines of code, I guess, but you know, check it out. You can write, wrap the int in an int 64. Thank you, Griffin. Uh, I decided to go with int though, as you can probably guess, just because int should be enough to, to house uh, a lot of posts anyway. In fact, like 4 million or something, 4 million? 2 to the 32. Minus 1, whatever that is. Uh, or f in fact, half of that, actually, isn't it? That's a lot of posts anyway. Uh, that's my point. Uh, right, so we've got a post here, and then we can mark down pars. We haven't done this bit yet. I'm going to leave that bit. 2.1 billion. Oh, yeah, 2.1 billion, if unassigned, yeah. Uh, it's, it's signed, though, so it's half of that. Either way, like, I really doubt we're going to have more than, <laughs> like, a million posts anyway. <laughs> Oh, oh, SRS coming through hard. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, like, Tom, uh, have you ever done like floating point arithmetic? So have you ever like figured out how the how the floating flo floating points work? IEEE, like standard. It's it's ridiculous, man. I remember doing that like when I was at Union. It's just like it's not confusing. It's not difficult either, but it's just yeah. Max cash stack. <laughs> uh, right, so we have here. Can we just pass in the post? 
post.title. And then we also have the post.content. So we need to serve HTML and which HTML are we going to serve? The post or HTML. So in theory, we have um, something that should work, right? So let's see. Uh, let's see. So the only thing remaining to do is to add the endpoint, as you can probably guess. So post related endpoints here. We're going to add a get. In fact, we had an example from Jin, which was here. So we can just copy and paste this. I'm definitely going to get a copyright strike for this for this music. This music is too good. I've been enjoying it, so you, you just know it's <laughs> it's going to be copyright claimed. Um, so we make post handler. So we've got app settings and the database, right? Uh, no, we don't need the app settings, do we? Do we need the app settings? No, we don't need the app settings in this case. Just the database. Okay, cool. Oh gosh, what am I doing? That was correct. This is what I wanted. Post handler. And instead of root, I have R here. And all I have is posts and ID. Cool. I'm just going to reply to text real quick. Sorry about that. Right, um, yeah, so cool, cool. Um, so if we rerun this, we should have the endpoint at least, right? All right, first things first, did Jin load my template properly? So where is the output? There you go, Debo console. Um, yeah, it loaded posts. So where's my post handler? here. I can put a breakpoint here and then I can go on my app, do a local host and then post uh, and then put this one. One there should work. Never done that ever. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see if it's gonna work. Custom recovery. What the fuck? So something something wrong happened, right? Yeah, so something did not work. Um, oh gosh. I do hate when you get like two gigabytes of errors <sighs> for doing some stupid things. So undefined validation function int or on field in 64. On field ID, okay, so. Right, um, basically I put in 64 here and that's not a validation function. So what, is, what are the valid validation functions on Jin? Let's Google that because that's what we're missing here. What is that? Validation functions in India. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so bind. Bindings required, email. Like, what are the valid ones? Uh, any of you guys ever use Golang? I just love it. Thanks to Java and my intelligence. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do personally just for um, like personal projects currently. I've never worked with it before. 
but my partner does. She works full time as a as a GoLang developer. So there are quite a few jobs in it, and it is a nice language. So JSON float sixty four binding required. Maybe if I just remove that UUID, so not the UUID, sorry, this in sixty four here. So required, just required. So Nixon, do you, did you learn GoLang at uni? Is that what you said? That's that's pretty interesting because they don't usually teach GoLang at uni. For example, I I got taught like Java, Python, and that's about it. And actually Ruby on Rails. Do you guys remember that language? Ruby on Rails, that was something I, I learned. So And I've never used it since. I guess it was popular back in the day, but I guess not anymore. So if you do local host, uh, Again, and then I hate Python with a passion. I, I like Python. I mean, I, I started with Python when I was like 12 year olds. <laughs> well, I don't do it anymore though, fortunately. It's too permissive, isn't it? It's not type safe. Okay, did work. Yay. So post ID. Okay, so the get post did not work. What do we return? So you have an error in your SQL syntax. Yay! Near dash D. Okay. So I have an error in my SQL syntax. Like, is this not replacing my my D with post ID? And I just realized that you guys can, can probably not see that. So this is an error apparently, and this is the error. You have an error in your SQL syntax. Check the manual that corresponds to MariaDB uh, near dash D. So it's not replacing the uh, the uh, decimal or the, the integer here with the actual integer there. Like why not? Is this not, is this not like a format function? Post ID. Does this work? I mean, I don't assume that's going to make any difference, but we'll see. <laughs> Message empty. <laughs> Interesting. So what is the issue in this case, though? Where did it go wrong? Like, what is the issue? Come on. So get post still fails. Golang is, oh, Goland, sorry. I thought, I thought you meant Golang. I did not read that right. So Goland is an ID, similar to VS Code with extensions, just seeing you use VS Code and hitting the debug console. I only use it to open files quickly. And you need we use it. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry, man, I didn't know. I, no, I've never seen that. Let's, let me do a quick search for that because I'm actually interested now. Goland. Oh, it's by JetBrain. Oh, right. It's a JetBrains Golang editor. Cool, yeah. I have used JetBrains stuff before, though. Um, C Lion is it used to be my 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 uh, preferred IDE for C++ because it had very good um, CMake integration before um, VS Code was a thing, and then VS Code was released. And yeah, I never used uh, C Lion ever since. And I also use PyCharm. So yeah, I mean, JetBrains is a good company. They tend they tend to write. Um, very good IDs, to be honest. Like, never had any issues with them. Uh, right, so, so get post. This is the one that doesn't work. Expected zero arguments, got one. Right, so yeah, clearly I don't know how to use the query. So SQL.query examples go and. Querying for data. Ah, question mark. Ugh. Somehow I've I remember that. I couldn't remember that. He used the question mark to replace things. JB Rider is better than Visual Studio Professional, in my opinion. 
See, I don't know a JB Rider either. <laughs> is it also a Jet, oh, Jet Brains Rider? Is a oh, okay. Is that the AI stuff? Oh no, no, no. It's not. It's a Donnet ID. I never, never did Donnet. You know, Tom. What do you think about it, by the way? Like you, you do a lot of C sharp, don't you? Like, is it a good language? Like compared to, I guess, <laughs> the alternatives like Java. See, what I like about JetBrains ID is that, is that they all look the same, so like I can click on it and see what it looks like, but it just looks the same as, as the others, so. Don't know, it's like Java, but Pascal case. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think C Sharp was created from, from Java, right? It's like it took inspiration. It's Microsoft's um, way of saying fuck you to, uh, <laughs> to Java. Yeah, they use a lot in Microsoft, though. Right. TypeScript is like .NET Java, cool. <laughs> because Java wouldn't implement some shit. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Uh, right, so now we should be able to get a post, at least. Please tell me it works. Okay, something did work. Something did or didn't work. Okay, so I mean, we, we did get something. Uh, the thing is that it's, it's white screen. I have no idea why. We got no data. Uh, let's try it again. So post one. So it does get the post this time, and we can see here that it has the the right stuff. So why is post.html not being served? That is the question. Let me open the developer tools here and see what what's being returned on the network. What's developer tools? F12, right? Uh, please tell me where network is. Where is network? Network, there you go. It returns 200, interesting. JSON tags on structs, maybe. Uh, JSON tags on structs. That for the template, do you think uh, it needs that? Because this is the uh, the post template, so it just gets the title and the content from whatever comes in. Uh, and I think I'm just passing the title and the content, yeah. So what am I doing wrong here? <laughs> Right, this is this is how I do with the index page as well. Post title dash posts. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. No idea why this is not. The request, is the request itself is working, it's just obviously not returning things. Uh, let's run this again and see. Yeah, like what the hell? Why is what does Jin say? Does Jin say anything interesting? So the request comes in through post one. And it says it succeeds, so like, no idea. What if I do index? Like, is it the file? Some issue with the, the file name? Oh, I bring me straight to JSON encoding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, marshalling is a big problem. Okay, so that also doesn't work. Uh -huh. Ugh, what is going on? What is going on here? Let's stare at this until it makes sense. 
So it's nothing to do with the file name. Uh, sorry, the, the template file name, right? Because this is the name of the template, and it has to be posted to HTML. Um, these do get passed in fine, and it reaches 200. Uh, it returns 200, so it does reach this this line. And then the app go just has that. I am confused, utterly confused. Dun, 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 dun. Utterly confused as to why this doesn't work. Are the other stuff working or did I break everything? Yeah, the other stuff is still working. I mean, this is not the right one, by the way. This should have been the excerpt. It's just a post, post. I've had it post zero. Message zero. Okay. Oh, this is not ideal. Not ideal. When in doubt, let's Google it. So, Golang Jin HTML serving white page. Let's see if someone had a similar issue. Go where the page is template served blank. Is it an issue with my execution here? No, it can't be. It can't be. What's this person doing? So, how do you parse in title? Right. Instead of this, let's just do what that person is kind of doing and pass the uh, the posts in one go. So we have post here, and post in this case is a common post, and that has title and content. Okay, so we're essentially just doing the same. With less lines, I guess. Nope. Did not work. Thank you, Slim. What, what did you say? This, uh... oh, I thought I got a message from someone. Oh, mind. Yeah, blank page. Uh, that's interesting. Very interesting indeed, because it does reach this. Here we are. So what the hell is the issue here? It was for me, but I thought our chat was chat GPT. <laughs> interesting, yeah. I thought I received a message, I just saw it popping up with your name here, like did wonder what that meant. What are you charging your team, dude? <laughs> uh, right. So HTML state is okay. Post HTML is here. So we begin, define, and end. And index, we kind of have the same, right? Define, end here. And the contact form, we kind of have the same. Define contact and yeah, what the hell is wrong with my my thing? Okay. I mean, clearly it's something that I'm not able to, to figure out here. Those all have capitals, capital case here as well. 
So he's, everything has been exported just as fine. C.html. Is that how we're serving the index? Index H. Show me your error, please. There is no error. That's the thing. <laughs> kind of want to see what's in post. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do that. So we have log. Um, but we have what what do we have here fatal message message is message a thing msg msgf wait which logger is this what is it wait what what's this logger okay that's not the logger i added one second guys this is the logger I wanted. Zero. Which is there on post zero log. Cool. Now we can do a log dot uh, and then we have Okay. Can we have a warning? There you go. Warning dot message F message f so there you go uh, yeah i can print f i just wanted to use the logger the zero log thing that i've added here uh, right so now uh, let's request this again okay so we did and here we are I mean, the post has valid stuff in it. That's the, that's the problem. Like, it definitely has valid shit in it. We can see message post. Yeah, where is the title though? There's not the title in it. So I've got a content and my very first post. Oh yeah, this is the title and then the content. Okay. Um, yeah, so that I, I assume that that doesn't fail to parse the uh, the template because it's valid stuff in it, right? And if we look in here, the only s stuff that I have is is that anyway. So like maybe this is the issue. Maybe it's like I'm calling it wrong somehow. Let's rerun it. If I remove the template expansions there, does it work? So uh, it still doesn't work, yeah. So I don't think it's like a syntax error with the template itself. Like I removed all of them and it still worked. But just just gonna make sure, right? Let's do it again. Just gonna make sure about that. Oh, for God's sake, just so stop it and then run it again. So now we have no template expansions here. That's also no template variables. And it still returns a blank page. So yeah, what, what the hell? What the hell? Never thought we'd get stuck on that. On something so trivial. So let's add those back. They, these are not the issue. So title and content. Title and content. So that's what post is title and content. Got to run, take care, take care, dude. Thank you for joining the stream again, and have a good night. Um, the issue is there's nothing like indicating what it could, what could be wrong here as well. Like everything says it's okay. This is the request coming in, and then the return type is 200. Like nothing out of the ordinary here. You are on post one. Did you mean to be on post? No, yeah, the post post one is the right one. So uh, the one is the ID. Like if I do zero, it will fail to get the post. So it, it gives me an error. So, but if I do post one, which is I actually have an ID, a post of ID one in the database, uh, that uh, succeeds to to get the post, and it should return the template with the post content in it. But it doesn't. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem. I'm still figuring out what it is. So. Is 
is there on any HTML? No, there's no HTML. That's the thing. Like, this is the... Uh, and the HTML that was returned from it, just just blank. Entire uh, the, the, the entire page is blank. So you can see here. Have a... Yeah, it is weird. I have no idea what's going on. No idea. Wait, did I use the right method anyway? So now I'll go. Yeah, we've got a get here, which just wondering. We can't ev even render any static content on the page. Yeah, no, apparently not. That's the interesting bit. Which is interesting because like all of these other pages, they, they do the same thing. Like I copied and pasted the code from there. So you can see here, like I call the, the context.html. It's a, with a contact uh, template and the post is, is that essentially. Um, maybe if I call the template with the just post here, because it can either be the file name that it loads in and you can see like what it loads in as uh, up here. So you can see that it loads post HTML and it also loads it as post. Maybe if we try this one instead, it works. Uh, but again, I don't know why it would. But let's, let's let's see it anyway. And if it does work, I'm gonna be like perplexed. What the hell? Right? Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> so basically, uh, right, right, right. Let's let's gather our heads here. Um, so this template file down here, post, is loaded twice according to to Jin. So it loads it as post.html and also as post except the post.html one doesn't have anything in there only the post one and if you're wondering I, I defined a name in here so it's whatever you put at the very top is defined that's very interesting it must be an issue uh, if you guys want to go ahead and um, put a uh, an issue on the GitHub page go for it <laughs> etra hello hello man welcome to the stream I also don't know, but I want to see how we solve this. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've solved it already. Just got to call it by, by the name instead of the, the file name. That was, that was very interesting. Um, but anyway, we, we got that. Now, the only thing remaining is that you can see that the uh, the post isn't being um, rendered. The markdown isn't, isn't being rendered. And I think I remember seeing a markdown to HTML Golang uh, renderer. So let's try and include this very quickly to render the, 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 the post as a HTML like page, essentially. Because if you look into the um, the actual code of the HTML here, you can see that it's it's just a text file. Well, text file with markdown content. So we're going to turn this into HTML on the back end and serve that instead. Uh, and then before that, just really quickly, uh, we have here as well on the main page if I can run the all the way from laugh <laughs> also don't know what it is okay Nixon where are you Nixon are you in Australia or something yeah we, we want to save the excerpt here on the on the main page anyway so not the the post so uh again we're going to go into app and we've got the made the home handler here which gets all the posts and all we're going to change here is the excerpt. Uh, we do want to change the post here to also include an excerpt, right? Excerpt, and that'll be a string. Yeah, so that gets the excerpt, and then in here we get the actual post. Uh, and obviously we're going to put in the excerpt there. And append all, and return. Return that. Where do we get, where do we use this? We use it in app.go. And in index. Okay, so posts. All we got to change here is, first of all, remove this random ass comment in there. Oh, 
Okay, so now we should be a little bit better. So the home page should serve excerpts now. So like the intro text and the uh, the actual post page should serve. There you go, the excerpt. So the actual post page should return the um, the content itself. Yay. Did my degree in Australia, <laughs> Melbourne, but I am in Africa, Kenya. That's cool, dude. So have you got a, an Australian and Aussie accent? <laughs> Good day, mate. That's all I know, mate. I'm very bad at accents anyway, so I'm not going to even attempt to do them on stream. Someone will clip that and then just embarrass myself online. Uh, right, so yeah, let's now the, the last thing for today. Let's try and add this markdown renderer. So the uh, post page actually shows up as, as nicely rendered HTML. So let's see how we can do that. So let's read an entire article to see how this how this person does it. Mark out for HTML. This HTML page will be used for my CSS framework to apply some of the special classes supplied by the CSS framework. We'll need to write a special hook to ad adapt uh, the way a few HTMLs are rendered. For this example, I'll stick to adapting the rendering of the H1 tag. Okay. Firstly, I want to see which library he uses it. Oh, I have to create the. Uh, an account to read this, and I hate these websites that make you create an account. Yeah, I'm not reading this. This is how to convert Markdown to HTML in Golang. Yeah, let's just use that. The first library we found, anyway. Right, so let's do a, I guess, a go get on this this library. Let's add it to our build. Go get. Okay. I'm just gonna copy this and paste it into into our page. By the way. Shamelessly just copying code <laughs> from someone's uh, repository. Yeah, it's a whole other English there, and pretty much any non English native speaker. Yeah, 28. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, the, the English that I struggle to understand the most is probably Scottish, to be honest. Scottish is, is difficult, put it that way. <laughs> but yeah, Australian is kind of a little bit similar to. Um, it's like a mixture of, of the UK accent with certain parts that sound like American. That's that's how I feel it anyway, but yeah. Right, so what do we want to do? We want to go into app and then on the post handler, we want to add this function here. Ooh. That will... Jesus, look at all those things. So we're taking the markdown as a byte array and return it as a byte array. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, now one of the one question, of course, is string to byte. Go along. <laughs> Uh, Etera, I wonder if people who did, who hide uh, its content behind <laughs> logging will understand that more people will spend the time needed to log in to leave and find out one of it. Yeah, I don't think they do, dude. I think the sole purpose of adding a paywall is so people pay for it, right? Which is unfortunate. Like, I on my website, I keep everything for free. Like, you can just go and read my blog posts. Yes, I haven't posted in a long time, but like, I'll never make it paid. But you know that that's someone's job, I guess, right? I mean, if you if you're a content writer, uh, you earn more money by making people pay for it, so it kind of makes sense. Glad we move forward. I like American English. English England doesn't <laughs> England don't speak proper popular English. I mean, we speak the proper English, right? We speak the OG English, <laughs> right? So okay, I can just like wrap it around the string. Apparently, that's cool. So, uh, what was I doing? Uh, markdown, yeah. So we've got the post content here. 
md to html uh, so we can have html content and then we can have the in fact can we do like post dot content equals this is going to be like interesting so post dot content cool let's see this now <laughs> if this works i'm like i'll be fairly happy to be honest so this this line is just like transforming the uh, uh, the post content from the database from markdown to html and i don't assume it's gonna work and it does work it does work ah but he gets like scaped he gets completely scaped by the templating language okay so golang template not scaped no escape <laughs> let's see if we can if we can render html there Wait, what? The HTTP type. Yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely some progress, yeah. So. So, we'll golang, uh, golang HTML template, render HTML. Right, so what do we do? Uh, we need to pass it as a template HTML. Okay, cool. Let's try that. So in here, we're gonna do a gin dot, whatever this is, and then we're gonna have the title as the post dot title, and then the content as a template. Ooh. HTML post dot content. Now, is this going to work? What is it? Missing this. Okay, cool. All right, let's see if we can have actual HTML rendered now. Um, yes, there you go. So that's better, isn't it? <laughs> that's much better, indeed. So. How would you find Golang? Etera, I, I actually like it, dude. I've been, I've, I've written it before for a very small project of mine when I had a restaurant with my family. <laughs> so I made a website for that in Golang. Uh, and now I'm obviously doing it on stream and I'm having a good time, to be honest. It's, it's I've not had massive issues yet. Griffin McMurray, that looks, oh yeah, it looks awesome, dude. Thank you. Uh, let's add another post, shall we? Let's see if we can, so like on the home page, uh, maybe we can add like a read more link into here, right? So let's do that. So uh, for the read more post, um, we're going to have to modify the posts here to add a, an ID, which is an int. So we have that. And then on the function that gets all the posts, we can like also get the ID and then create a link in the HTML in, in the index template to redirect you to the page. That that would be cool, wouldn't it? Post two, yeah. <laughs> let's let's add that one. Uh, cool find on the Markdown package. Yeah, it's 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 really cool. I saw it yesterday and I was like, yeah, maybe we could store all the all the posts in Markdown and then just render them as HTML because it's just easier to store Markdown uh, than it is HTML. You have less things to escape on the database and it's uh, more compact as well. Uh, Joey, you should try setting up Air for your project whenever you have time. It auto reloads the page. Okay, thank you, Joey. I will definitely set it up. Uh, so what is, what is it called? Air. Uh, Go lang Air. Live reload for Go apps. Yeah, dude, I will definitely set it up. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this on the back burner, and this is a very good uh, stream idea as well. So maybe on the next stream we'll set that up. 
Supposed to, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Where was I? Um, yeah. So maybe we get the the ID uh, from the posts. So from the database, sorry. So on the database, when we get all the posts, we can also get the ID, all right, for it. Now we don't want to get the excerpt. We want to get the ID as well, though. Ooh. Uh, and then we want to say post ID there. And then uh, wherever we call this, which is get posts down here, I think. So on the index page, we gotta we gotta put some templating magic there to have that read more link, right? So in here we have the post and then post excerpt, and then we also have something like a read more, right? So yeah, let's do that. Post, and then we have the ID right here. Post the ID right there. Okay, cool. Uh, so in theory, we should have that. Um, that read more link now on the home page. There you go. So there you go. So see, it's, 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 it's just how easy it is to add something like this, I guess. Um, what I don't like, of course, is like I have the title as a H1, and we also have a H1 in here. So maybe we should like prevent users from adding the H1 more than once. <laughs> For all node guys employed here, <laughs> node watch. What used to be Node is Erringo, but still Whip. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not gonna lie, the, the Go stack is much simpler than Node, in my opinion. I've, I've run some Go apps before, and it just seems like... I'm not gonna lie, you guys create problems <laughs> only for you to solve them. So, like, there's a, there's a, a huge kind of, like, build system for Node when, at the end of the day, it's just generating some JavaScript files. So it kind of feels like a little bit bloated in my opinion. Uh, this is why uh, I kind of prefer Go in that sense, because Go and HTMX just allow you to have like one language for the back end, uh, and the same language can kind of like send data to the front end with HTMX, and that will uh, kind of replace most of the JavaScript that you would otherwise be writing with things like React and Node, right? So it's it's just easier for me to create a, an, app, an application like this with this this stack. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm having a good time here, <laughs> and I'm glad I don't write Node, so. Well, I mean, I'm not hating on it, you know. I know that some of you work uh, with Node, and yeah, hats off to you. Because it is quite complex. Uh, but yeah, let's add the second post, right? So let's add another migration to add a <laughs> second post. Uh, should we get ChatGPT to actually write as a, a nice, like, in-depth markdown? So write a complex markdown uh, file with titles uh, not containing h1 code blocks tables All right let's see what this spits out for us Never had issues with her, to be honest. Why do you think it's still a whip? Okay, yeah, I've I've no comments on that. <laughs> Wait, can ChatGPT not render? Not give you like a, a code block? Uh, give me all of the above as a code block. <laughs> yeah, it, it can't render Markdown, look. It renders some of it, like it gives you some of it as a code block, but then it, it kind of renders that on the on here. Is that a bug? I think that's, we just found a chat GPT bug. Markdown doesn't work very well. <laughs> so, uh, I got a better idea though. So why don't we get the, we go to GitHub, to this project, 
to this project's GitHub, and then we just copy the readme file, right? That, that would be good. Uh, yeah, if you guys haven't yet, check it out, by the way. If you want to help me with this project, feel free to go and, and, and help me on it. It's all on here. It's on the description of the video as well. So I've been having fun writing this whole thing up. Uh, let's read the raw file. So we got what we need now. So if you go into the, the migrations that we have, and we do um, goose create, and then let's say we add add a complex post example. Okay, so now we can kind of uh, go into this migration file. Jeez. There you go. And then we can just do, we can put it here. There you go. So that, I kind of just want to do one more of this really. So we have that. And we have this here. And what else did we have? So it's the same migration as the, the first one that's adding a, a sample post. Uh, but in this case, obviously, we're going to have a little bit, something a little bit different. So we're going to going to get rid of all of this and simply copy. Where is it? Where is it? Where's my raw thing? Uh, there you go. We're going to simply copy that, right? Now, what the hell is going on here? So, where does it break down? Let's see. Oh, this. Can I escape it like that? I can escape it like that, right? Let's see if it breaks down anywhere else. Okay. Let's see if we can do a migration up now. So, goose up. Doesn't have a default value error. Oh, what is going on here? Field excerpt does not have a value, a default value. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Let's see. So we do need to add an excerpt as well, um, which will be down here, right? After the comma, I guess. So this is the intro text, right? So read more, uh, this is urchin. Uh, this post is an example of how, of how complex, how markdown can be uh, rendered as a post. Cool, now let's try again. And yes, we've got that post in there now. Uh, so let's have a look at the application now. So if we run it, okay, so we've got read more here. So my very first post, and then we've got a second one here, which shows up after that at the top. Oh, they both have the same title. Oh, and there you go. We've got the, uh, <laughs> this project's, um, markdown. Kind of rendered as a post and yeah it's cool isn't it i mean i'm definitely impressed i didn't think it would be so easy to create something like this with golang but it is uh so cool i mean i think i'm gonna actually call the stream here guys it's been it's been like nearly two hours and i kind of need to go to bed and i've got to work tomorrow in the morning but yeah thank you all for watching though and uh, please do check out. I'm going to push all these changes to the GitHub. So if you want to like help me or make suggestions, uh, feel free to like post comments on the or post an issue on, on, on the GitHub repository. And I guess I'll see you guys some other time. I'm not sure if I'll be streaming Golang in the next stream. Uh, I might like go back to one of my previous projects, but I, I certainly will uh, continue this though in the stream in the future. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, Griffin. Uh, it's been good seeing you again, dude. Uh, and yeah, good night, guys. Bye bye.